Hi, I am Ahmed Daoud, and in this session, we will discuss what is the intuition or how alpha formulation is derived. What actually alpha is called? Alpha is called as a cost complexity parameter. We will discuss in that particular session. So in the circuit learn, there is a very a brief information is available here regarding the alpha and uh, regarding the whole concept that we have discussed. Okay, if you want to explore that, you can easily explore from their documentation. Like you can go from here uh, from the user guide, and you will uh, you will get this type of uh, documentation. And in the last topic, one point ten point eight is minimal cost complexity pruning this is a brief explanation of the method that we have discussed and the today's uh, about the today's session uh, they also have uh, explanation regarding that but we will uh, go towards uh, a little bit beyond that concept okay we will extend our information uh, by discussing uh, by uh, comparing it with the uh, work that we have already done okay so there is very brief information you can uh, get from here also and now i am jumping towards the today's session and our aim is uh, to see what uh, how alpha formulation was derived so alpha what was the alpha alpha uh, we know that alpha has this type of formulation r of small t minus r of capital t divided by t bar minus 1 and we are already familiar with that formulation how it is derived we will see in that session so uh, i am going to start from the previous uh, session uh, like in the case of linear regression we have discussed the concept of regularization in the case of linear regression when we were having the problem of overfitting we have used the regression technique or uh, regularization technique we will just uh, do uh, you can say recap a little bit uh, that concept of regularization uh, so that you will uh, get familiar with the today's session so in the case of regularization uh, pre uh, before the regularization our aim uh, of uh, linear regression when we are training linear regression our aim is to minimize our cost function let's say g of theta is a cost function which is mean uh, square error so during the training process our aim is to minimize that cost function so when we were having very high polynomial regressor then minimization of that cost function during training can lead to overfitting and we will get this type of very tight model which is capturing uh, very tightly the data training data points that actually led to the overfitting so that's why we introduced a penalty term uh, to the uh, you can say uh, cost function Previously, the cost function was just mean square error. Okay. And our aim during the training process is to minimize that. But if we will just minimize that uh, mean square error, that particular cost function, we are leading towards the overfitting. Then we have studied that if we will add a penalty term to the cost function, then we will get another uh, type of cost function, j of theta is equal mean square error. Uh, plus uh, a lambda into some penalty now we will have two terms in the cost function minimization of mean square error can lead to the very complex model or can lead to the overfitted model and minimizing the penalty term during the training process can lead towards the simple model because penalty is the equation uh, holding the parameter uh, uh, co uh, coefficients of the equation or you can say parameters here in the case of L1 penalty, it will be a theta 1 plus theta 2. Minimizing their values during the training process can lead towards the simpler model. And lambda value actually uh, tells how much we have to add the penalty to the cost function or how much we have to penalize our model. Okay. So this term led towards the overfitted model, the complex model. This term led towards the simple model. And we want some balanced model. Okay, so uh, lambda controls how much penalize the model. Okay, the same type of technique we will use in the case of decision tree. 
so in the case of decision tree uh, let's say this is the data set and this is the classification problem and we have to build a tree that uh, will be able to classify some new data points okay so during the default uh, uh, algorithm with or you can say model with default hyperparameter values our model or our decision tree will keep on splitting until there will be some decrease in impurity there will be some valid partition or to get some pure leaves okay to get or to minimize the gene impurity this is the, actually the aim during the training process so if we will say that splitting the data to uh, get pure leaves this is the aim during the training process but this particular aim can lead towards the overfitting because when we are keep on splitting our data points to get pure leaves or to minimize the gene impurity we can get a very complex model which has a lot, a lot of branches a lot of terminal nodes that can easily lead towards the overfitting so uh, we can say that at the start our cost function let's say r of t is gene impurity and during the training process our aim is to minimize the gene impurity okay so let's say r of t it's our cost function so minimizing this cost function during the training it's our aim and at uh, at the uh, start of the training algorithm or training part if we have selected gene impurity as our uh, impurity measure then r of t will be gene impurity so this can lead to complex model very having all leaves pure or you can say uh, very least gene impurity and can lead to very complex model having a lot of number of terminal nodes okay so at the start we, our aim during the training process is just to minimize the gene impurity so if our cost function is r of t then our cost function will be equal to gene impurity so like we added a penalty term in case of linear models here again we will do the same type of task we will design another cost uh, you can say cost equation or cost function in which there will be this or uh, the cost function that we was having previously which is gene impurity plus we will add some uh, term that will be like a penalty term in the case of linear model here this term will be a uh, number of terminal nodes okay now instead of decreasing just this uh, particular cost function during the training part now our aim will be to decrease this cost function during the training part okay or our aim is to decrease that particular cost function r of alpha t that's why this uh, this actually this function called as a cost complexity measure okay like you know that uh, time complexity this is a, a, as related to the cost function so we uh, you can call it as a cost complexity measure and our algorithm is minimal cost complexity pruning so we want uh, we uh, we do cost uh, we uh, do pruning in the way of minimizing our cost complexity measure r of alpha t okay r of t will be the type of like cost function uh, here it is a gene impurity t bar it it will be uh, similar to uh, analogous to the uh, penalty term so here it will be the number of terminal nodes and alpha alpha will be called as a complexity parameter okay or you uh, sometimes uh, like in the ascii learn it is mentioned cost complexity parameter okay it controls how much the importance of this t term in that equation okay so like now if you will minimize this particular term r of t during the training process it can lead towards the uh, complex model and if you will minimize that term during the training process then it is uh, it is meant by uh, like this that you are getting such type of decision tree which has less number of terminal nodes because you are to uh, minimizing this term okay and this minimization of this term can lead towards the simpler decision tree and minimizing of this term can lead towards the complex tree so we again want such type of balanced tree or optimal tree that is good in our case of or uh, in our case of our data set or according to our problem statement or problem scenario 
okay so like here i have mentioned instead of having tree which is having minimum r of alpha t now we want we are interested in the decision tree having minimal cost complexity measure okay so this led towards the complex model this can lead to the simple model and alpha will control so we want a decision tree with minimal cost complexity measure so here you can see that tree with minimum r of alpha t compared to all other trees it is our goal or it is our aim okay now with respect to different value of alpha when you will pass a different value of alpha you will get a different tree which will have diff, uh, minimal r of alpha t or minimal cost complexity measure and it is quite obvious like when you have different value of alpha then your minimal co uh, uh, you can say cost complexity measure minimal r of alpha t will be diff, uh, will be uh, you can say of uh, minimal will be for different tree okay because uh, when you will pass at another value of alpha then uh, maybe uh, if you will pass the smaller value of alpha compared to the previous case then you are actually decreasing the importance of terminal nodes then maybe you will get uh, uh, or you can select the model which has uh, which is more complex than the previous case and uh, it, it obviously have the less impurity than the previous case and uh, you can get the that complex tree as a uh, uh, which uh, have minimal uh, cost complexity measure on the basis of updating your alpha value so you can say that with respect to different values of alpha different tree will have minimum r of alpha t and we will get another tree okay so now let's say this is you you can consider this as a tree and this particular node as a root node t small t and this whole you can call as a capital t we know that uh, in the uh, training part we always splitting our nodes in the way that uh, we are decreasing our gene impurity where we find some decrease in impurity our uh, algorithm will automatically split that part into some uh, uh, child so some left or right node okay so always like our algorithm work in that way always our impurity of root node is greater than our the impurity of our uh, you can say uh, impurity of our whole tree or is, uh, impurity of their uh, uh, weighted sum of the impurity of their childs okay always r of small t will be greater than r of capital t so if i want to calculate instead of r of small t if i am interested into r of alpha t what will be here r of small t plus alpha into as this root node has just one node so this will be one and this will be the equation r of alpha t for that particular node t if i want to see the cost complexity measure for the capital t it will be like that r of alpha t is equal to r of t alpha t bar okay so now i will see that at which value of alpha both root node the cost complexity measure of root node and the whole tree becomes equal to each other it means at which value of alpha r of small r of alpha of capital t becomes to r of alpha of small t they becomes equal to each other at which value of alpha if i will make them in this way to find the equation at which uh, alpha we can calculate or we can see that our both equations of root node and the whole tree becomes equal we can calculate in this way uh, i have put it both equations equal to each other and uh, after doing some uh, simplifying that i get this equation which is alpha is equal to r of small t minus r of capital t divided by uh, t bar minus one and here in that way we have derived the equation or formula of alpha okay now keep in uh, like uh, forget for a while the cost complexity measure r of alpha t like r of alpha small t and r of alpha capital t for a while just forget that and then you just have to analyze what is actually alpha is representing here you can clearly see that alpha is representing 
the ratio of decrease in impurity to the the number of terminal nodes added to the tree okay this is alpha is explaining here so here in that way you have seen that you uh, can calculate uh, now you have derived a formulation in which you have some equation or some formula for alpha by using that formula you can calculate the value of alpha at which the cost complexity of root node becomes equal to the cost complexity of the whole tree okay and you also uh, analyze that formulation of alpha alpha is also explaining a lot in the case of the decrease uh, like in the case of the strength of the splitting okay it is also explaining how much the splitting is powerful or advantageous okay so as uh, i discussed previously our aim is to now instead of having a tree which has this minimum uh, gene impurity i want a tree that has minimal cost complexity okay okay so like we did in the last session we have pruned the branches according to alpha minimal alpha value and against each tree we were having some alpha value okay against each tree we were having some alpha value so if i will tell you the alpha value minimal alpha value or you can say the alpha value placed against each tree if we will pass that alpha value to the in the uh, cost complexity equation then the correspondence tree will have minimum cost complexity measure it is definite and it is proved by the theorem okay uh, if i will show you here here you can see that uh, uh, i was telling that if you will pass alpha value here alpha value 0.005 okay then it is very definite that this particular tree will have minimum r of alpha uh, if i will say r of alpha t okay compared to all other trees if you will pass alpha value 0 and you know your equation is this one r of alpha capital T is equal to R of small t uh, sorry R of t which is gene impurity plus alpha into t this is equation okay and it is proved by theorem if you want to go in more detail how it is uh, proved that this particular against each alpha value you will get a tree that will have minimal cost complexity measure how that is approved or proved uh, i will give you some reference you can uh, uh, go through that but it is quite uh, you can say enough if you will get the uh, idea that it is uh, already approved okay so uh, if you want to see that if you will keep, uh, pass the value alpha is equal to zero then according to that particular equation r of alpha t this t1 will have minimum r of alpha t compared to r other trees t2 t3 t4 it is proved by the theorem okay so now we will come uh, back towards the uh, okay so uh, if you uh, want some another tuition you can uh, uh, for a while you can forget the part of uh, cost complexity my the whole equation and you can consider alpha value individually uh, alpha formation uh, individually uh, uh, the whole explanation that i have explained you just for the sake of that you can get an idea how alpha formula is derived okay if you are interested in that that's why i have designed this session so uh, for a while if you will consider alpha alpha is explaining you can say it is uh, explaining that how much the decrease in impurity and how much the complexity added to or the number of terminal nodes added to the model or, or to the decision tree 
by splitting that particular node for which we are calculating our alpha okay so smaller the value of alpha can be due uh, to both reasons if there is a smaller decrease in impurity of parent and child and this can also lead to overfitting the reason is same that if there is some splitting which is causing very less decrease in impurity then this is less advantageous so why we are separating that node okay so smaller the value of alpha can be both reasons uh, can be due to smaller uh, decrease uh, difference in impurities of parent and child this can also lead to overfitting and there can be another reason uh, reason that larger the number of leaves uh, that splitting is uh, are adding to the whole tree and this is also dangerous for uh, because this can also lead to overfitting so both reasons of getting smaller value of alpha are giving us the overfitted model so we simply can say the smaller the value of alpha is the weakest link or it is the less important compared to all other non terminal nodes which has some bigger values of alpha compared to that uh, 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 that we are considering uh, right now hence by using the alpha value we can find the weakest link in the decision tree and we prune the branches of the weakest link accordingly okay uh, we get uh, at the start we can start t1 then prune the branches of weakest or uh, which has minimum alpha value then we will get another tree which we can call t2 and in that way we keep on pruning pruning on the basis of weakest link or on the basis of minimum alpha so weakest link you also uh, uh, get familiar in the last session for uh, we have to calculate the alpha for all non terminal nodes node with smallest alpha is producing weakest branch or it is uh, less important compared to others so we will prune that weakest link means splitting of this node into child is less important compared to all other non terminal nodes okay so one of the important aspect that i want to tell you here we in the case of post pruning we grow our algorithm according to the same impurity measure that we have previously which is impurity like gini impurity if we you have selected gini impurity as your uh, impurity measure you have to grow the whole tree with respect to minimization of that gini impurity but after growing full tree you have to prune your tree by considering that equation r of alpha by considering that particular cost complexity measure and by considering that cost complexity measure you have derived this formulation of alpha which have this these terms like that so you will prune your fully grown tree with respect to that alpha okay and it will be same as that you will prune the tree with respect to r of alpha t okay so that's why it is also called minimal cost complexity pruning so we are trying to get the tree which has minimal cost compared to all other trees okay and if we will prune our tree with respect to minimal alpha we will follow some order and we will get finite number of alpha values and we will get finite number of trees okay and against each alpha value whatever we will get a tree what tree is present this tree will be will have minimal cost complexity measure and it is uh, it is proved mathematically also if you want to explore that you can go to that particular uh, site uh, which will be uh, uh, berle Co college of science in there that particular course stat 508 applied data mining and statistical learning there is topic 11.8.2 which is minimal cost complexity pruning and here they have a detailed uh, explanation of that cost complexity pruning and if you want to see how it is uh, proved that uh, with respect to minimal uh, or you can say with uh, against each alpha whatever tree is present will have minimal cost complexity measure with respect to that alpha how it is proved you can see or to you can refer that particular uh, explanation okay 
uh, and this is a quite you can say a brief explanation if you want to see that you can also read you will get an idea after uh, seeing that particular lecture that uh, about today's sessions or if you will see both uh, lecture the previous one and this one you will get an idea of uh, what they are explaining here okay but this is enough for you to consider that i have explained in the previous session how the post complexity uh, pruning or oh, sorry how the post pruning method uh, or you or you can say post pruning approach is carry out okay so we have seen in the last session and this particular session the aim of this session uh, was that uh, we have to see how the alpha formulation is derived and we have seen that how the alpha value uh, formulation is derived but part we have missed here uh, i intentionally missed that part uh, because uh, it is not much important uh, because our aim just to see that how alpha is derived the part i missed that i uh, missed the part where uh, the proof is present how the uh, corresponding tree against each alpha value is having minimal cost complexity measure if we have that particular alpha value okay so that part i have missed and if you want to explore that you can refer that uh, reference that i have showed you here but still if you will consider that lecture it will be enough and if you want to make it more simpler you can consider only just the alpha okay what is alpha what is behind the intuition of the numerator and denominator of alpha and it is quite enough okay and just go through the post pruning process in the next session we will uh, do some uh, uh, how we can uh, do the post pruning by using sklearn so for now